So now that we have the suspension reinstalled on the truck and we're back on four wheels, the next step that we're gonna to need to do is get our brake lines reworked back into the chassis. So let's get into it. You can see the riding on the pavement. Your kids are growing up in basements. So whenever you're gonna be running your own brake lines and not pre-bent ones, like we're going to be doing to the rear on this truck, it's important that you have a special brake line tool. I have one right here, as you can see, it's, it's a special brake line tool. And uh, the reason that you would need something like this is to ensure that you do not kink your brake lines whenever you bend them. And these special tools here are uh, really good at bending line, brake lines because you could use the uh, different radius that you have on the neck as well as the body of the bottle. So definitely pick yourself up one of these if you're going to be doing any brake line work. And it's a little bit of an incentive too, so. For the front brake lines on the truck, I am using pre-bent lines in a kit that I picked up from Summit Racing. It's from a company called Right Stuff, if I'm not mistaken. So these are pre-bent lines. Uh, they're, yeah, they're close. We're going to need to pretty much rework all of these lines, at least a little bit, but it's definitely going to be better than having to try to bend all of these from scratch, especially things like where you have the radius for this front cross member and a lot of tricky bends where you come up and do little offsets. So we're gonna be using these for the front and then whatever we uh, tie into this rear brake, brake line that comes from uh, the proportioning valve, this is gonna be where we're gonna make our own lines all the way to the back of the truck. So obviously, we're not going to be tying in the proportioning valve or bleeding brakes or any of that, you know, really anytime soon until we get the cat back on the truck. But we're going to get these brake lines roughed back in so that whenever that time comes, we don't have to climb around underneath the truck and it's going to be right here in our teeth. So we have a T that comes down. This is going to be for the front brake lines. It comes around the outside of the frame, runs in, and we'll have a T right here and then we'll run to the front here, and then we run across, up and over to the front on the other side. And I'll show you that. It routes around the front cross member, ties into the front, and then we'll go to soft lines, which I also have, and the same thing here on the driver's side. And then the rear brake line, like I already kind of showed, will just come down. Uh, it does tie in with just a uh, union, and that will go to this brake line here and we'll run to the rear. So let's get into working these front lines in first, get the T in that I was talking about. Uh, we'll get these strapped. I am going to be removing the motor mounts, uh, the brackets for it. I plan on probably going a different style, more like an LS-ish uh, mount. So I'm going to be removing these. That will give us a little bit better access to our straps that are right here that were pretty tricky to get at with these installed. So I'm gonna get these guys pulled out, cleaned up, and then I will get you guys back in here to show you mounting these brake lines in. With those motor mount brackets out of the way, the next thing that I wanna work on getting installed are the soft lines. So they connect through here, and then you have a little C-clip that clips on the back that keep them from pulling through.
With the front brake lines mostly together, we're going to go ahead and move to the back and get started on the rear brakes and we'll run those forward and get it interconnected with the stuff up front. One problem that I'm seeing with this soft line is that the factory bolt that came out of this old distribution block for the rear is too thick here. So I'm just gonna have to pick up a new bolt that has the same thread pitch on it, but it doesn't have this little bushing part on it. So that's no big deal. I just gonna have to run in the hardware store and pick up a bolt that will go in there. But uh, what we do need to address for our brake lines, it's a little tricky. I'm not sure why it was designed this way, but can't really help that too much. The routing of the brake line for the rear ties in like this and it makes basically a 180 degree bend where it will come out and then it shoots down this cross member here. I'm gonna be using these lines. I know it's probably kind of tricky to see. They already come pre-flared with fittings on either end. So we're gonna work with these and work our way forward. So this is what we're working with so far, which should be pretty close as far as making it to fit in with the soft line. One concern that I do see, potential concern, is that whenever we do the rear mounted gas tank, that's going to fit in this area here. And the concern I have with that is the possibility that that tank might hit the back of this line. So there's a decent chance we're gonna to have to redo this whenever we get to that point. But for now, we're gonna work with it. Well, change of plans. We're not gonna be doing that. A new plan here is we're gonna obviously mount this distribution block on the rear axle where it's supposed to be. And then I'm gonna pass this line through, especially since we're in a lower configuration, we're gonna have a ton of slack just kind of looped up on the inside. I'm going to, at least my plan as of now, is to bring this line through, this hose, and then run it along the frame. That way we'll have a much easier bend. The other hard line that I bent was, as I mentioned, was out sticking pretty far and it had a little bit of a kink in it and trying to get around here was a pain with that extra bend. So I think by running this soft line along the back here and then whenever we have our hard line, we're gonna strap it using this hole in here, the existing hole. Running along there will be nice and tucked away, no real sharp bends, and then we'll run hard line from here from this point and then still do our 90 and run that forward. And that's gonna be a lot cleaner, a lot easier than trying to do that shepherd's hook to wrap back in and then do a 90 to then clear the C notch and all the other angles and so on and so forth. So I think this is gonna be the better route to go. It's gonna be a lot easier to do. And I think just kind of overall flow better. Okay, so doing it this way, definitely seems to be the way to go. We can put a nice, comfortable radius on this so we don't have any kinking issues. We'll get this strapped up here. And then we have a nice clean 90. And then we'll come up over the C-notch. I got two little angles put on there. And then as we come around, we'll strap it again right here. And that's going to be about the end of our run. So we'll put another coupling on this fitting here and we'll go into our next piece. We'll put a little kick on that to come back out straight. It's going to fit the profile of the frame. And then we'll pass through here and keep on moving up forward until we tie into our uh, rear connection up there. So we got the brake line routed all the way up. I have it another piece extended and I got it marked. I wanna get all this brake line strapped so that I know that this is gonna be the for sure measurement before I cut it. And then we'll put a flare on this end wherever we cut it. And then we need to get a union and we'll put that in there to connect the two. Now we'll finish our rear brake line aside from the runs that we need to do on the axle from that block. 
And so one thing that I'm doing for mounting these, if you're not aware of what they are, they're called riv nuts. And so you have a hole, it's kind of like a rivet, except it's got a threaded insert so you could run a screw into it, a screw or a bolt. So it's really clean and it's fixed into the frame so you don't have to have a nut on the other side of it. It acts as the nut and it stays fixed in place. So I'll show you guys how you would install these. I already have a few of the other ones installed where you could see there's one right there. And then it would just come through on the back where you'd run a screw through or a bolt and it'd hold it. So I got one more left to do up here for the front. I'll get this installed and show you how that's done. All right, so whenever you're running in a rib nut, what you do is you thread it on to the stud. I forget what the actual technical term for that is, but whatever, I'm calling it a stud. And then you run that into the hole, keep pressure on it, and just clamp it down like you would any other rivet. And when you're done, you just unscrew it. And the rib nuts installed. So that's gonna get us to a good stopping point for tonight. I'm going to tomorrow pick up some fasteners so we can get everything strapped down and tightened on the chassis, all the brake line. And then we're going to have to run the brake line on the actual rear axle. So I'll get those custom made double flare bolt ends and need to pick up the fittings that go into that block, as well as the wheel cylinders. We'll get new wheel cylinders put in, which I have waiting. And then what else? I need to get that other bolt for the distribution block in the rear. And then whenever we have everything strapped down, we'll get the other part of this brake line where it's gonna meet with the front. We'll get that cut wherever it needs to be cut. We'll get that flared and then we'll get another union in there to connect it. That's pretty much gonna wrap up the uh, the brakes, the brake lines at least for the C10. We also do need to pick up some copper washers for the front calipers. I got the one side popped off and I noticed that the new soft lines didn't come with copper washers, which is an important thing. If you don't have those copper washers, the calipers are gonna leak 100%. So I need to pick up some of those. It's no big deal, pretty universal things. And uh, whenever I have those things, hopefully tomorrow afternoon, we'll jump back in and get this wrapped up. So I'll see you guys tomorrow morning, or tomorrow afternoon. So it's the next day, uh, got everything strapped up to this point. And with that being said, the next thing we're gonna need to do is get this piece of pipe cut. So we know we got our measurement where our fittings are going to go. So I made a mark, we're gonna cut it. You can't just cut brake lines with like a hacksaw or anything. It needs to be with a tubing cutter. And the reason for that is you don't want any of the burrs or anything. You need to have a nice clean cut surface. So if you don't have one, pick yourself up one of these. It's the same thing you'd cut uh, copper pipe with, like water pipe. So if you have one of those, you can use it to do this as well. For those of you who may not know how to do a double flare on a brake line, the first thing you're want to, going to want to do whenever you get, obviously, your tool is you take the size of the brake line that you are going to be flaring, in this case for the rear it's quarter inch, and you wanna have the gap, this first lip here, you want about that much sticking out for your first flare, and then you clamp it down, and then you'll take this guy, and then you'll put your bit in there, your driver, Put it in the brake line, clamp it down till it seats flush with the tool, and then you'll take this guy out and then just do it again with just this tool, and that will give you your double flare. So that will give us our double flare after we get that done. So this is ready for the union to be installed in here, and then we'll finish getting this strapped, and then we're pretty, pretty much good as far as the rear connection.
So I have the left rear wheel taken off. I got the new wheel cylinder put in. I'm going to hold off on putting the brakes back together on the rear, just because I don't have any pads are actually, or the shoes are in great shape. So I'm actually probably just gonna clean that up and reuse that stuff. I mean, who needs rear brakes anyhow? But we need to run the brake lines from the wheel cylinder, across the axle, and then up into this distribution block, and then the same thing on the other side. So I'm gonna get working on getting those brake lines. Again, it's gonna be two fittings, one per end, and then we're going to need to do that double flare that I showed you before for the front. Well, I don't know if you saw it or not, but the stupid little tab, whatever you want to call it, on the end of this die snapped off inside the brake line. So uh, yeah, this uh, flare is trash. Uh, this line is probably trash now. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to recover it. And uh, yeah, so I, now I need to at least buy a holding fruit and, yeah, fruit and tool just to redo that since that broke so that's that's wonderful so i'm back from the auto parts store i got a new tool and i got a cup of sweet tea to take the edge off i got the first side re-ran it's uh connected on both ends luckily i was able to use the old brake line to Kind of, kind of as a template to get the length that we're going to need to redo it, as well as roughly the bends. I did have to end up pretty much rebending everything just as I went. So uh, as far as flaring, it's gonna be the same thing that, I, that you saw me do the first time, except at the end, you don't wanna break the tool off in the end of the tubing, so. But besides that, it's all the same. So I need to, uh, finish the other side and then these rear or actually all the brake lines are done at that point. this other line in that's going to complete the rear axle brake lines and the brake lines for the whole truck actually so this is a little bit of the final product try to keep it as straight as we could so that's going to wrap up the front and rear brake lines on the c10 uh, it's at least going to be pretty good practice for whenever we have to do all this over again in a few months whenever we go to bleed these and everything leaks. So, but at least that's good practice. So, anyways, that's going to pretty much wrap up the video there. I appreciate all of you guys for watching and following along. Uh, if you have any interest, I started an Instagram page. It's uh, Barn Built Fabrications. If you have any interest in that, go ahead and check it out and give it a follow. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but I got our new hats in. This is a test. I'll put a better picture here at the end of the video. Uh, let me know what you guys think and if you guys would have any interest in maybe getting a hat or a shirt. I do have another shirt design on the way that's coming and uh, whenever that gets in, I'll be sure to share that with you at that point. But anyways, thank you guys all for watching. Give this video a like if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already and uh, piss off your neighbor, disappoint your mom. And until next time, keep on keeping on.